number five. That's like nearly a full week. This is like a work week. I've made it. This is more videos that I've made in this week than I made in the entire of last year. So it's a success so far. 28 days, there are 23 days to go. I can't do math so good. So if, if that's not right, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think it's 23. If not, I'll put a correction down here somewhere. Today's video is a really quick Q&A. In the start of January on Twitter, I put out an AMA, Ask Me Anything, and I got a couple of questions. I'm just gonna tackle one of those today because I'm gonna have more content for a few more videos in a couple of weeks time, unless some more questions come in, and then I might roll them all into one, we'll see. So in this video, we're gonna answer William J. Holstead's question, who's a really cool guy. He's an actor in Manchester. He's got a great, interesting look, very classical. And his question was, Tom, what is your favorite portrait photograph, not by yourself, and why? And I had to think about this for a while because I don't, I don't really tend to have like a favorite portrait photograph. I tend to have favorite photographers. But Emma, lovely Emma, bought me this book for Christmas. A thousand and one photographs to see before you die. Now it's, yeah, a little bit morbid that title, but it's a really good book. It's kind of opened my eyes to some stuff that I wouldn't normally see, because I only tend to look at modern photographers' work, like newer stuff, whereas this dates way back. This goes back to like the early 1800s. Okay, so let's take a look. So I did a quick flick through and I've picked out three pictures from this book, which I just really like. And they're three portraits, and I think they're really powerful images. Photo number one, this is of Corporal Edward Scott of the US 10th Cavalry by Baker and Johnston. I wonder if that's a close relation. Probably not. And it's 131 years old. Wow, it really makes you think we've been doing this for a long time. Um, and I really love this because whilst it's, yeah, it's a very simple portrait, it's of this chap who sat it shows so much because initially when you look at it, I think you see his face as like the first thing. And then as you come down, you realize there's much more of a story to be able to tell. There's the crutches, the way he's wearing his uniform, and then you get to his, well, his leg, or lack of leg, I suppose. And to me, this really just stood out as one of those images that had like raw stopping power. Like I was flicking through the book and I just saw this and I thought, wow, that's, that's to me an image that like really grabbed my attention and pulled me and I had to have a closer look at it. So that's number one. Number two on my list is kind of a similar tone. I can't even pronounce her name. This is Jikurala Apache Cowboy. I probably said that in a completely bizarre way. Sorry if I've just butchered it and ruined your name. By Edward S. Curtis. And this was shot in 1905. This would have been taken on like probably a big like eight by 10 film camera. An eight by 10 relates to like the size of the plate of film that goes into it. And the idea is if you've using like a, a small camera, like a phone, it's got like a really small center like this big. A camera like mine has a full frame 35 millimeter sensor, which is about this big. And one of these eight by 10 cameras has a frame that's about this big. And the difference really, as you go up, it's not just quality that increases, but the look of the picture changes dramatically as well. There's like a difference in like the depth of field and the details and film when it's shot in that way and an eight by 10 just has such a dramatic different look. And for a portrait, there's just nothing that can replace it. It just costs a fortune to be able to shoot that stuff nowadays. So hardly anybody does. There's a few photographers. I'll try and think of who they are and see if I can link their work somewhere. But it's, yeah, it's like a magical, magical way of taking pictures. So yeah, I really loved it because again, it, it stuck out like it was a beautiful portrait. It had that little bit of shadow, so it's quite dramatic, but that warm tone at the same time. And I love it when we have these old style portraits of people that are so simple, but tell such a story. Like that's, that's something that really stood out to me in this. Um, and it's beautiful. I mean, look at all the, look at all the detail, like in the outfit and everything. But the third and final picture that I picked on this book is really in the same tone. So you can, you can see there's like a trend going on here of things that I really like is of this guy. Um, I love photos like this. This is the Bataki chief. Um, and the photographer is Kasimir Zaruski. Um, sorry again if I'm butchering your name. And they don't even know when this picture was taken. It was between 1929 and 1937, um, and it was in the Congo. And what I really love about this is that this is a photograph of someone that lives in a completely different culture to what we have in like Western civilization. Almost like a subculture of different tribes in Africa. And this is a portrait of, of a person from that. And what I find so amazing is that one of the photographers that I really loved when I got into photography, when I first started to research different photographers that are out there, people I could get inspiration from, there's one guy called Joey Lawrence who has a picture that's almost identical to this one. And it's beautiful, I think, to be able to see that in a span of almost 100 years, like 80 to 90 years difference, there's these two pictures that exist in the world that are 
so incredibly similar to each other of these tribes that have kept their traditions and their ways for the last hundred years but while still keeping up and maintaining with this like modern culture at the same time it's kind of a bit weird to be able to get your head around but it's it's pretty cool thank you will for that awesome question um hopefully i've answered it i don't know i don't have a favorite portrait but i do have a certain style of images that i really love and i'm inspired by different photographers that i follow as well I'll try and link Joey's website down below. I don't know if YouTube will let me do that yet. I only have 14 subscribers, so. So that's question number one answered. If you have any more, ask them below. Um, I'll see if I can get around to them in the next video. I've got a few more ready. If I have any more questions, it'd be great to be able to answer those at the same time. See you tomorrow.